Well, good morning to you all. It's uh, great to see you, great to welcome you this morning here at Helston Light and Life. It's my privilege to do that this morning. My name is Michael. If you're here for the first time, I'm the pastor here. And uh, just a very, very warm welcome to you and to all uh, who are gathering both here this morning and uh, online as well. We welcome you. And uh, if you're watching later in the week, as I keep on saying, we pray for all of you who are gathered, listening, or listening later in the week. We believe God can meet us in every, uh, in every occasion, and we can encounter him. So it's just great to welcome you. Uh, great to welcome Kath this morning, who's going to be uh, bringing God's word uh, a little bit later on. So more from Kath later, but it's great to welcome you, Kath, this morning. Uh, it's Children's Church. It's Rock Solid as well this morning. So Children's Church is for those in primary school uh, and Rock Solid for those in high school. And uh, thinking of that, just as we come to worship this morning, just thinking for those of you who have enjoyed something of a break from learning, break from school, um, just looking around for children's church guys particularly, there's not so many in the room this morning, is there? But listen, what's, you don't have to be in children's church or rock solid to answer this question, but over the last couple of weeks, what's been great? What have you enjoyed? What's been a highlight? of the last two weeks, and I'm gonna come running with my microphone, or you can just shout it out if you like. Has anybody had a, had a highlight? Daniel, come on, what's a highlight of your school holiday? I've sprung it on you, lad. Went to the beach. Went to the beach. Between the showers, or in the showers. But anyway, went to the beach, fantastic. It's always good to go to the beach in Cornwall. Any, we went to Longley, just to say, lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Um, which was great. Anybody else? Come on. Uh, something that you're thankful for, something that you said, that's been a highlight of the last two weeks, something that you're thankful. I mean, you don't have to over-spiritualize it, but in that context, and that was great, and I just want to thank God this morning. Spring harvesters, has it been good? Oh, fantastic. Good. A highlight at all? All of it. <laughs> no, very good. A son who started to go to church, it's always great to hear. Yeah, that's great. A son who was baptized, also very good. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Alison. Having, having the grandchildren over on the holiday. Yeah, fantastic. That's special, isn't it, for sure. Anybody else? Mary. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there's another birthday, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Did you want to come on, Mary? Let's do that now. As soon as we're talking about it, that's the quick reminder about that. So, sorry, Charlotte. Again, spotlight. Yeah, it was wonderful. I'm so so blessed to have my family. And on Tuesday, they came down. Josh was here and, and Jess and um, Travis have been down. And it's been really wonderful. They had a breakfast with Charlotte. And then last night, they had a party. And that was, oh, well, it was good. It was lots of <laughs> 80s music. This year, one with a chicken dance, you know. <laughs> Okey cokey and all that. No, it went really well. And you ought to see Michael's and some of their outfits. My, gr my son was made a whoopee cushion. He was a whoopee cushion. <laughs> but it was excellent. We had a great time. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you, next, this Saturday come in, my husband is going to be 80. And so... <laughs> and he's got a lot of family coming down, which is wonderful. But also, we want you to, everybody here, if you can, if we can get you all in, we're going to have a party here, all right? And it's going to be from half past six to 10 o'clock. All are welcome. The band is going to be the Alabaster Soul, which is a soul and jazz band. My son is the main drummer, uh, but it's a professional band. And um, we're having pasties. But if anybody likes to come, we don't want any presents. He's too old for presents. <laughs> 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 but anybody who would like to, 
could bring or what, a pudding or a bottle of soft drink or a cake or something. Or you don't need to bring anything, you just come yourself. And he's also having a collection for cancer. So it'd be lovely to see you and it'd be great fun. All right? Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Well, look, as we, uh, as we come to worship, we can look back. And in one sense, we can journey back and see and be thankful for the things that God has been doing. And it's always good to be able to look back with gratitude. But this morning as we worship, having just mentioned a few things that we're thankful for for the last two weeks, I really felt this morning that there was in my heart, there was an invitation from the Lord himself to say, but would you come and would you see? Would you come and see? And uh, that, that's our heart, not only for this morning, but that's my invitation this morning that I believe the Lord himself extends to us. Would you come and see him? Would you come and see the wonder of who he is? Would you come and see this morning uh, just the greatness of who he is and all that he's done? Would you come and see him? And then as Kath speaks to us later on, and hear him and all that he wants to say. But as we go to school, as we go back to college, as routine hits, I think Jesus is there saying, I'm going before you. I'm going with you, I'm going before you. So come and see who I am and come and see what I'm doing. And, and I'm praying that our eyes and our hearts would be open to just to be pressing into these next weeks, coming, seeing who he is. So would you stand with me for a moment? Is that okay? I wanna, wanna pray for us this morning and, uh, and I pray that the Lord would just extend that invitation to your heart and mine this morning. Come and see, draw near with faith this morning, along with all of the people that are gathered here. Come and see him, because there's no one like him. So Lord, we thank you for time together even this morning in this place. And Lord, I pray that even as those two disciples who followed you uh, on that particular occasion, and they said, where are you staying, Jesus? And you gave them an invitation, come and see. And they came, and they saw, and their lives were never the same again. So Lord, I pray, by your Holy Spirit, would you be present and at work amongst us this morning and help us lift up our eyes and through the eyes of faith, come this morning in worship, come as we, as we uh, come to your word, help us to come and see who you are and the wonderful difference you make in our hearts and our lives. No matter how old or young we are, you give us all that invitation, come and see. So, Lord, may the response of our hearts be, Lord, this morning, we come. We come. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. What a privilege it is to be able to worship here together, united behind Christ. Let's worship. Up from the ashes, your love has brought us out of the darkness and into the light, lifting our sorrows, bearing our burdens, healing.
Let's just continue just in an attitude of worship just for a few more moments. From the youngest through to the oldest here this morning, the words we've been singing invite us, call us, even stir our hearts and our faith to come to the one who is worthy, the one who reigns over everything, all of the yesterdays and todays and all of the tomorrows that you and I will ever see. His name is Jesus, and we honor him. He alone is worthy, and he alone is full of glory. There is no better story that is unfolding in the history of the world than his. There is no better future and destiny that he is bringing about that's going to last forever as wonderful as his story and his invitation to you and me is to come in worship and to say, Jesus, King of all history, you are worthy. Jesus, thank you that you came into the world. Thank you that you came for us. You loved us so much that you died on the cross for us so that we can become your children, sons and daughters. And Jesus, into our uncertain world in these days and the news overnight and the trouble still there in the Middle East and uh, in Russia and Ukraine as a church family, as we come before you this morning and say, Jesus, only you are worthy. We remember your words through Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength. And he is an ever-present help in trouble. And then he speaks these words, the psalmist later on. So come and see. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he's brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations I will be exalted in the earth the Lord Almighty is with us the God of Jacob is our fortress and so our hearts this morning simply cry out to you King Jesus into the troubled places of our world into the troubled places of our community into the troubled places in the story of our families and indeed this morning even in our own hearts King Jesus would you come hope of the world the one who alone can rescue and restore and redeem the one who says come and see Lord, we bow our hearts and simply pray. May we know your grace. May we know your mercy. May we see and experience your rescuing power. In Jesus' name. And we pray for Children's Church. As a family, this morning we pray for Rock Solid. And we pray that as they go out to all that they have plan this morning may Jesus may all that you are even speak to their hearts come and see come and see how great Jesus is well may they know you more and more in Jesus name amen amen do please be seated unless you're in children's church thank you to the team as well who are going out and rock solid heading out at this moment too just before I invite uh, Kath to come and bring uh, the message for this morning, just a, a couple of things by way of notice. Hopefully a slide's going to appear on the screen. So, so that's what's on this week. Time out this afternoon. And uh, as Mike goes out to do Rock Solid this morning, he's also here this afternoon uh, speaking at the next time out service. So 3.30, hymns, afternoon tea, a message from Mike here this afternoon. So... Uh, do feel a warm invitation to be here for that. Uh, this evening, uh, it's like he's not done enough. Mike will be doing deeper uh, at our house as well this evening, 7 o'clock for the youth. Football's moved to Monday night now. Uh, yes, hooray. Uh, Mustard Seed Cafe, communion, prayer meeting all this week, and then energized for the kids having just gone out. That's back 
this Friday. Uh, men's breakfast as well. Is that on there? Not on there. Men's breakfast. So a big shout out for that this coming Saturday. Uh, it's our next men's breakfast. Rogue. I forget the official thing, but it's like rogues and rascals uh, and vagabonds or something uh, in the Bible. And uh, Isaac's going to be helping us take a look at another rascal, another, uh, another rogue, and, uh, and helping us as guys explore what might God be saying to impact our lives through these characters in the Bible. So that's next Saturday, not next, this coming Saturday, 8 o'clock, uh, here for breakfast, guys. It'd be great to see you. One last thing, our ASM, our annual church meetings, approaching a week on Monday. So please, just a heads up, uh, for those who are part of the church, just to look out for an email, which you should get either Monday or Tuesday this week. Just details of how you can be praying. But that's an invitation that is open to everyone uh, who, uh, who values being part of the church family here at Helston uh, and wants to know something of some of the opportunities, uh, the uh, things that I believe are before us that we can pray into and believe for and come to God with. Uh, so if you want to make that a priority, I I'd love that. So a week on Monday evening, half past seven, here at the Light and Life Center. Is anybody going to wave at me and say I've forgotten something? No. I don't think I have. Kath, come and join me. Uh, it's great to welcome Kath. I'm going to leave Kath to just to introduce herself a little bit as she uh, opens up um, uh, God's word for us this morning. But just from a personal point of view, I've enjoyed getting to know Kath and I value her heart for the Lord, her heart for prayer, her heart for Port Levin, and um, just a privilege to welcome you this morning. So I, I well, thank you for being a oh, growing pleasure. and deepening friend as well. So bless you. Excellent. Thanks. I'm going to pray. Is that okay? And uh, then we'll hear from, from all that the Lord wants to say through you. So Father, thank you this morning uh, for this uh, opportunity of once again daring to believe that you, our Heavenly Father, are here by your Holy Spirit ready to speak to our hearts. And thank you for Kath. Thank you for the work of grace and your story in her life that continues to unfold. We thank you for her. Uh, we thank you for her heart for Port Levin. We pray even this morning, may your kingdom come and may your will be done. Uh, Lord, we pray for the food festival that's rapidly approaching and all who are going to be serving. We pray that the very light and love of Jesus would be seen in and through that event and those who are gathering as part of the festival angels. We take the opportunity of praying for that. But Lord, in these moments, as Kath opens your word, we want to hear you, Father. And we even dare to pray, may our lives be changed, be impacted as we hear you speak to us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can you hear me? Am I on? Fantastic. Thank you so much to Jenny and the band. Lovely way just to gather together to enter into God's presence. I'm really impressed that after all of the parties this week, you were so loud and up for it. Good to see you here this morning, my love. Well done. Happy birthday. This time next week, I am going to be in London. If you could put my slides up, that would be fantastic. Now, the London Marathon is taking place next week. And as you look at me closely, you will note that I will not be running the London Marathon. Running really is not my bag. Do we have any runners here this morning? We've got, got a few. Anybody run a marathon in here? Have you run a marathon? You've run the London Marathon? <laughs> wow. Absolutely brilliant. Well, next week, I am going to support my friend Dawn. Uh, Dawn is running the London Marathon in memory of her mum, who sadly died a couple of years ago, and for whiz kids. And Dawn is one of those people who isn't an internaliser. She is from Liverpool, and she loves to share her life, whether that's online, whether that's through WhatsApp groups, whether that is face-to-face. And she has gathered together a group of, I think it's seven of us, who are her official support team for the London Marathon. And we've had to endure this WhatsApp group for I don't know how long. Uh, 
Pippa and Julia are also part of that WhatsApp group. We've got some from Birmingham. We've got some from all over the country. And uh, the idea is that we pray and support her as she trains and builds up to it. And then we're going for the weekend. We're going up country on the train. We've got T-shirts with her uh, face planted on them. We are Dawn Evans' support team. We are there ready to walk around the route and to shout at her. Whatever she needs us to shout, we are going to shout at her. Whether it's keep on going, whether it is don't give up, whether it is you look absolutely wonderful. I don't know. We are there just to support Team Dawn. And uh, for those that have run a marathon, oh my life, what an undertaking it is. All of the training. At the beginning of this year, Dawn chatted to me and she said, I'm really struggling with the training. I have to get up and out of the house for five o'clock in the morning. This is January when it's cold, it's dreary, and it's dark. And I have to go and do a long run. And then she says, I come back, have something to eat, and then I go off and teach at school. She's a teacher. And I'm like, what, you're out the house at five o'clock running? And she's like, yeah. And she's like, would you pray that I just have the ability to get out of bed and to do it? And I'm like, yeah, of course I'm going to pray for that. Because if it were me, I would be in my warm bed with the covers over my head thinking, do you know what? I'll just give them the money. It's not worth it. (laughs) But Dawn, she's got this vision. She's determined. She is going to run the London Marathon. And it kind of challenged me about my life. And I thought, what is it that I'm passionate about? What is it that I would get out of bed at five o'clock when it's dark, when I'm tired, when it's cold, and I would go out and I would run after it and I would do it. And then I began to think about my faith. And I began to think about my relationship with Jesus. And I reflected back on the years that I've been a Christian. And I was thinking, do you know, there have been times when I've been like that. When I've been up for it, when I've been excited, when I want to live my life for Jesus. I'm going to go the extra mile. I want everyone to know how wonderful Jesus is. Come back from things like spring harvest and you're up for it. You've had this wonderful teaching. You've had fantastic ministry and you're like yeah but then I reflected that there are other times in my life when I haven't been quite so woo and I've been a little bit yeah I'm just going to try and get through life I'm just going to keep my head down just going to survive and I've looked back and I've seen times when I've not gone for it but I've settled I've settled for an easy life And I've kind of blended in to the culture around me. And I haven't been distinctively different. I've lost that sense of vision, that sense of purpose, that sense of I want to go for it and live my life for Jesus. I still love Jesus, but I'm a little bit tired. I want the easy life. I want it all to be a little bit comfortable and just stay in my bed with the covers over my head. And this morning, I want to talk a little bit about that. I want to talk about this idea of settling for second best and blending in. And we're going to use a character from the Bible whose, fo- whose son is probably far better known than he is. Many of us who have grey hair will have been through Sunday school and we will know the wonderful song, Father Abraham has many sons, many sons as Father Abraham, I'm one of them, Delilah. Well, Father Abraham had a father and his father was called terror. And we're going to look at a little snapshot of an instant in Terra's life. So if you've got a Bible, please turn with me to Genesis chapter 11. If you don't have a Bible, please don't worry, we're going to put the words up on the screen. So this is Genesis chapter 11, and we're starting at verse 27. This is the account of Terra's family line. Terra became the father of Abram. Now, Abraham actually became Abraham, and his wife Sarai became Sarah, but that hasn't quite happened yet. God hasn't given him the covenant and all of that exciting stuff, so he's still called Abraham at this time. So Terah became the father of Abraham, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran became the father of Lot. While his father Terah was still alive, Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans in the land of his birth. Abraham and Nahor both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah. 
She was the daughter of Haran, the father of both Milcah and Iscah. Now Sarai was childless because she was not able to conceive. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram. And together they set out from Ur of the Chaldeans to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Terah lived 205 years, and he died in Haran. So we have this little snapshot of the life of Terah. Terah decides that he is going to uproot his whole family, and they're going to go to Canaan. Now, this really wasn't a simple journey. This was actually around about a 1,000 miles. Now, if we were going to do a journey of a 1,000 miles in a car, and let's assume that we're not in Cornwall and that we are somewhere up country where they have motorways, uh, we would do it in around about 14, 15 hours. And for us, that would be a pretty long journey. We'd have to think about it. We'd have to think about fuel and stopping and resting and all of those things. And here we have Terra. He does not have any form of transport like a car. They are on foot. And they decide that they are going to go on this journey. Now, we don't know much about Terra's faith. We don't know whether he was a man who really went after God's heart. We do know that he was a maker of idols. So we suspect that there was a little bit of a compromise in his life. But we do know that he wanted to up sticks with his family and move to Canaan. So the problem that they had was they were on foot and all of their livestock. So they had to keep everything together. They had to stop to feed the animals, to water them, stop them running off here, there, and everywhere. So on a good day, they would have travelled probably four to five miles. Quite a slow pace, or that's probably quite a fast pace for me, uh, walking, but that's quite a slow pace because you're trying to get everyone along together. And they reckon that it would have taken anything from between six months to a year to get there. So this is a huge undertaking. And you can understand why, actually, he got over halfway and he decided, do you know what? I'm not going to go any further. And he settled. And I was trying to work out, why did he settle? Yes, it is a long journey, but he had this idea, he had this vision. He wanted to do it. Why did he settle? And I think there are a few reasons, perhaps, why he settled. Haran actually was the home that his family had lived in years and years ago. It's where Terah originated from. So for him, when he arrived in Haran, there would have been a sense of familiarity. Oh, I know this. I grew up here. I know some of the people. I know some of the culture. And thinking about going to Canaan, well, that's a long way away. I don't really know the culture. I don't really know any of the people. And it's quite difficult when you move into a new culture. I've moved into Port Levin from uh, Birmingham. The culture is very, very different. Uh, the language is very, very different. The scenery is fortunately very, very different. I love it. But I've been here ooh, 20 months, and I think I just know a little bit about the culture and about the people. Because it takes time. It takes time to get to know people. It takes time to get to know the culture. And so you can understand why he possibly thought, this is familiar. I know where I am here. This is easy. Let's just stay here. Let's not go any further. This is the familiar. This is the known. So that might be one of the reasons why he did it. Another reason why he might have done that, again, it was the safe option. We don't have to go out any further. We don't have to worry about being robbed or anybody attacking us. We're here. This is safe. This is easy. It might be because, actually, he was tired and he was fed up. I would be tired and fed up. I get tired and fed up very, very easily. And when I'm tired and fed up, I'm moody, and I make a whole host of decisions that probably aren't the most healthy. So my doctor is very uh, lovely. It's about 12 years old. You know when you get to an age when you go to the doctor and you think, seriously, you are about 12. My doctor is lovely, 
but is encouraging me that I need to look at my BMI and lose a bit of weight. So every week I endeavour to start a new diet. And then I get a little bit tired and a little bit moody. The fridge door opens and oh, I'm eating all the Easter eggs. It's brilliant. You know, when we're tired, we don't make the best of decisions. And maybe he was just tired and fed up and just thought, do you know what? I'm going to give in. We're just going to stay here. Or maybe actually he was still grieving the loss of his son and just the pain and carrying that around with him. My parents are here today. They lost their son, my brother. I think it was 12, 13 years ago. And it's absolutely soul-destroying to see a parent lose a child. It's just horrendous. And you think, for Tara, was he carrying that weight and that burden and that pain around with him? And so as you look at it, there are loads of mitigating circumstances. Why did he stay? Why did he not go on? Maybe it was easy. Maybe he was tired and fed up. Maybe he had a lot of stuff going on and he couldn't face it. I don't know. But he settled. He didn't go for what he'd set out to go for. He settled for second best. And I think sometimes we do that in life. And I think it can be quite easy to do that. I don't always think it's a decision that we make, right, I'm going to settle. Sometimes I think we just gently and slowly morph into it. That the culture around us, that the values of the culture, that the life that we're living, just everything coming at us, just gently, bit by bit by bit, we lose sight of what's important. And we settle. And we merge in. Someone once said this. When one begins the journey of following Christ, the goal is always the promised land. But most of us settle in Haran. We fatigue from the journey. We grow old, disillusioned with the long, harsh journey. We set up more comforts for ourselves, not sure how far away this promised land is. We grow comfortable, short, of Canaan, satisfied with Haran. Have I gone on one, two, four? Yeah. And then we die, never seeing the land God promised, because somewhere along the way, we lost heart for the journey, took our eyes off the prize, or settled for less faith in the one who leads. We don't lose faith, but settle for less. After all, we left Ur, got as far as Haran, just didn't make it to Canaan. And I think it's interesting. I think we don't lose our faith. It's not that we give up on Jesus. It's not that we stop loving him. But I think it's that we settle for less. We become far more comfortable. We lose our passion and our vision. We lose our sense of awe. We lose our sense of actually... God can change the world. God is awesome. God is all-powerful. And we just become comfortable and settle. And that can affect us in lots of different ways unhelpfully. It can affect our enjoyment of life because actually it's not always God that we're going to. It can affect our contentment, our peace and our joy as we settle as we don't allow God that access into our lives. It can affect our relationship with God because maybe as we settle, we don't prioritise those times of intimacy with God. We don't prioritise his word, but we take the easy option. We flick the telly on. We watch Netflix. We do whatever it is that we do. And that then affects our relationship with God. It affects our ability to be used by God to change the world because very often we're just trying to survive in life, let alone saying, I'm here, use me, looking for the opportunities and the promptings of the Holy Spirit. It can affect the way that we see ourselves, our sense of self-worth and value. As we take in the values and the ethos of this world, we forget who we are. We forget that we are precious and dearly loved. We forget that we were created to be the people that we are for a purpose, with giftings, 
that God rejoices over us with singing. Mike has taken the young people off to their group today. I want to encourage us to pray for Mike and to pray for our young people because I think today's generation are under so much pressure because there is so much they are bombarded with by our world and our society, online, social media, everything. That actually, that affects so much of their life, their self-esteem, their sense of identity. And we need to be praying for those young people that God would protect their mind that God would reveal to them who they are through him. Because they are bombarded by so much today, as we all are. But I think at their age, they are particularly vulnerable, more so than us. As they are trying to work out who they are, as they are trying to work out what life is all about, they are bombarded by this load of lies from the world about how you find satisfaction, about what gives you purpose, about what gives you meaning about what gives you worth. We know that is found through Jesus. Jesus is the only way, and yet this world is sowing a lie. And our young people are caught up in the midst of that. Pray for them. Pray for parents. Pray for teachers. Pray for everyone. I think the pressures out there are great. And I think when we're under pressure, and when we feel like settling. We need people around us who will walk that journey and who will help us. I often think that if Tara had had a group of people around him, they could have sat down with him and said, how are you doing? And he could have vented. He could have shared what was going on and they could have said, you know what, it's all right. Just take some time. Take some time out and breathe. Catch your breath. And when you're ready will go again. But I don't know whether he had those people around him, but we need those people around us. We look at Dawn running her marathon. She's got a group of people. We are there to cheer her on. Dawn's really interesting. Dawn has completely thrown herself into the marathon. So I'm not a big fan of WhatsApp groups, I have to say that, because you get all of those memes and you get everything else that come through and it goes ping, ping, ping. I'm not a big fan. Dawn's group last night was just on fire, and that was Pippa Renyard's fault. But Dawn will tell us each day, I've done a run. She'll tell us, I was on the uh, marathon Facebook uh, page today, and they were telling us this, and her whole life is centred upon the marathon, what she eats, what she wears. We even had this discussion about if it's raining next Sunday, do I wear a poncho Or do I get those little plastic things that you put over your trainers so that my feet don't get wet? And I'm thinking, I don't care, Dawn. If it's raining, you're going to get wet. Does does it matter whether you're wet at the start, the middle, or the end, mate? That's the least of your worries. Completing the course. I hope Dawn never watches this, Dawn. I love you. Um, But she's in there. She's reading every book. She's got magazines. Just filling her mind with it. And I think there's something in that. And I thought I would never say this in the whole of my life, but we need to be a little bit more like Dawn. <laughs> That's disturbing, isn't it, girls? But, but we do. Because Dawn has this goal. And she's focused. Dawn has filled her life with, how can I achieve that goal? I'm going to read this book. I'm going to watch this YouTube clip. I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to get some people around me. She's filling her mind with what will help her to achieve that goal. And in the midst of everything that we face in this world, the temptations, the values, I want to encourage us, what is it that we are filling our minds and our lives with? Because if our vision is to know Jesus and to let him shine through us, that others may know the glorious truth of new life with him, What is inspiring us and empowering us and equipping us and motivating us to do that? EastEnders isn't going to. The word of God will. What are we filling our minds with? These words will be familiar to many of us. The Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12, he says this, Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvellous mercies. I love that phrase. God's marvellous mercies. 
to surrender yourselves to God, to be his sacred living sacrifices and live in holiness, experiencing all that delights his heart. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. I love those words. I love that version. It's a little bit different to the NIV. It just makes you think afresh of these words. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What do we fill our minds with? Is it the word of God that is alive and active, sharper than a double-edged sword that can change us, that can heal us, that can just bring God's word to us? Or is it the things of this world? I'm not suggesting that we uh, hide away in little Christian ghettos and we don't watch anything on television. I love a good old program on telly. Don't get me wrong, I can sit and watch anything. But is that the only thing that's influencing me? Is it the word of God? Is it my relationship with God that is inspiring me and encouraging me and sending me out in the power of the Holy Spirit to be the best version of myself and to reflect Jesus in this world? Because when it isn't, and when we allow ourselves to settle, then actually we miss out on so much and the world misses out on so much. Gavin Calver is the uh, director of the Evangelical Alliance. And he and his wife uh, wrote a book called Unleashed. And they were talking about how they watched uh, a documentary called Blackfish. I don't know whether you've seen it. It's about killer whales. And he was talking about how these whales were taken and put into captivity. And uh, he noticed this about whales that were in captivity. He said, whales normally swim hundreds of miles a day, and yet they're taken out of the open water and put into small tanks that seriously limit their movement. In the wild, they were living up to 75 years, and in captivity, their lifespan is a maximum of 35 years. When the whales were free, their fins were pointing up, and they were healthy and liberated. In captivity, their fins were bent over and their temperament affected. Having been peaceful creatures, they were becoming violent with one another and with human trainers. One of the whales had ended up attacking and killing a trainer. In the wild, there is no record of a killer whale attacking a human ever. Gavin went on to say this. What struck us most was that these mammals were living in an environment that was killing them, robbing them of life and causing their behaviour to change. And he then likens it to our lives as humans and as Christians. And he says, we are not called to live in captivity. We are designed for freedom. What is our culture moulding us into? Is our culture forcing us into cages of fear and confined spaces of busyness, sucking us of life in all its fullness? Our creator designed us to soar, to experience life in all its fullness, to be filled with living water because the author of life has poured water, poured it into us. We do not want to conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the power of God and his spirit breathing life into us so we can demonstrate a new way to truly live. I want to encourage us this morning to just pause and reflect on our lives and on where we are at. Do we feel as though we're living in freedom? 
Do we feel as though we are living life to the full? Do we feel tired? Do we feel weary? Are there struggles and are there things going on in our lives? Do we feel as though we have settled? Do we want to know a fresh touch of Jesus upon our lives today? That we may soar, that we may walk with him in the paths that he has called us to walk and the ways that he has for us where we may be salt and light, where we may shine for him in a culture of darkness and difficulty, where we may not blend, but shine. I want to invite Jenny and the worship group to come and join me, and we're going to, together, just continue to pause to reflect and to invite Jesus to speak into our lives and to help us to respond. I'm going to do a couple of things as we do that. As I was preparing for this morning, I really felt that there were three groups of people that God wanted to meet with this morning. God wanted to touch their lives and to fill afresh with his spirit. If you could put my PowerPoint back on, sorry. Those three people are, firstly, just those of us who think, oh, actually, I'm doing all right, but I would love just a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit this morning. I'd love just that fresh empowering, that fresh envisioning that as I go out into this new week, into this new term, into this new season, I do so with the right vision and the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the first group of people. Second group of people I really felt God laid upon my heart was those that are struggling. That maybe life is difficult. That maybe you want to live out your life. But there's stuff that is just weighing you down. And this morning, Jesus just wants to touch you and wants you to know that you are loved. And that you are enough. And that he is with you and walking with you in this situation. And that however tough it may feel, he is there. And that he can still use you. And that you are still a blessing. Then the third group of people is maybe those that don't yet know Jesus. But perhaps want to find out more about him. Or want to move towards him. Or even want to say, yes Jesus, I want to know you this morning. I want to pray for you as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to remain seated and we're going to use a classic old song. I have decided to follow Jesus. The chorus, I have decided to follow Jesus. I've decided to follow Jesus. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. And the band are going to just very gently play that. And I'm going to pray for the first group. And after I've prayed for the first group, uh, we're just going to together, all of us, sing the words of that chorus just as a yeah this morning Jesus I'm following you your vision, your way I want you and then I'll pray for the next group of people and then we'll sing it again and I'll pray for the final group of people and we'll sing that again so let's just close our eyes, let's just be still let's just pray together Holy Spirit, we invite you now to just come amongst us. I want to thank you that you know every person here this morning. And I want to thank you that you love each and every one of us. We invite you now to come, to have your way, to speak, to heal, to move, to minister to us. for those people who know you Jesus who just want a fresh filling of your spirit would you come would you come
come and envision? Would you come and strengthen? Would you come and give them all they need as they go into life today, tomorrow, in this week ahead? That whatever they have on, whoever they are meeting with, we pray that they would shine for you. stand and join us. Christ is
going to bring the service to a close with just a final prayer in a moment. But I just want to invite you this morning, uh, even as Kath led us through that prayer time, it may be that you would still value praying with somebody. That image of the team uh, who's cheering on the, uh, I forget the name of the lady who's Kath Dawn, who's run that, that picture of the team cheering on Dawn. You know, we have a prayer team here who would love to pray with you. It's it's that whole encouragement of being part of a family. We want to encourage that with our prayer ministry. Um, this is family. This is standing aside one another and praying for one another. So we want to encourage that. So if you would value prayer, it's not too late. Uh, a fresh touch of the Spirit. If you're facing a struggle. If you want to come to faith in Jesus or you've got more questions or indeed if the Lord has just been speaking to you in another way and you would just value receiving prayer, please come for that and you know when Jesus breaks into a story and maybe just challenges us a little bit about settling uh, it's never to condemn us it's to call us on with him it's that invitation to run with him uh, into all that he has so we hear that from his heart this morning the, the loving words of Jesus not to settle but to run this life this race with him uh, so may, as we finish, may this grace of the Lord Jesus and this love of our Father in heaven and this presence of his Holy Spirit at work among us, may we hear his invitation to get up, to move, to not settle, to come and see who he is and all he's done. Well, to this end, Lord, I pray, fill us with your Holy Spirit and lead us into this week with all that's before us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you. Time for a cup of tea uh, or coffee if you prefer uh, and for prayer if you would value it. Bless you. <laughs>